I'm Oscar. And I'm Dan. And today we're in Malta. Previously on Oscar and Dan. It just feels so fun walking around here. We're gonna try to book our dives today already and then hopefully do it on day three. Ah! Oh my god. Good morning, it's a new day here in Malta and we are about to go pick up our rental car. We're gonna drive around the main island and also to the secondary island of Gozo and see more of what this fascinating country in the middle of the Mediterranean has to offer. We're Oscar and Dan, two boys from Sweden traveling the world together full time. We're currently trying to visit 100 countries before the end of the year and this is our second video from our stay in country 85, Malta. It's Hey everybody, I'm your host Barb. So I'm heading out to pick up the rental car. We've downloaded this app, which apparently is like a huge thing in Malta. It's called GoTo. And by the looks of it, it's honestly amazing. Cause you can rent cars for super cheap and they're just parked all around the city. You can go pick them up and then return them in like a designated parking spot. We'll see if after the experience is over, we'll recommend it still. And here is our car. And just like all other Maltese cars, it's covered in dust, <laughs> but that's okay. It's a little nerve wracking. I'm in the center of town and this is where I'm starting from. <laughs> and that's not exactly ideal, especially since we're driving on the left side of the road here, which I have done many times before, but it is not my uh, default side. Wish me luck. <laughs> now let's head to Gozo Island and explore more of Malta. So interesting guys, we're driving through the suburbs to Valletta, I guess. I don't know if the whole island is considered suburbs. It's this really weird and interesting mix. Like it looks like partly Dubai, partly the US, partly Southern Europe, but it's beautiful. Like these suburban areas are definitely where I would want to live. This is very nice. But we just discovered that we forgot our swim shorts. Discovered. I'm so sad. I really wanted to go swimming, but I mean it's May, so it's not gonna be super warm, but still Here is the middle island the tiny one and over there is Gozo Can't believe how tiny Malt is <laughs> We just drove from one side of the island to the other in the flashiest of flashes. Ready in the flashiest of flashes. So we're going scuba diving tomorrow, which will be super exciting. I'm honestly most excited for that. But really, driving across Malta is like, I would almost like to bike across Malta sometime. And now we try to figure out what to do. So we're the fourth lane in line to get yes. on. So I'm hoping we get on this one. Otherwise, I we guess pay? we'll be... Time to board the ferry. This is like, I think the second time only that I ever do this where I drive onto a ferry with the car. Last time was in Montenegro. You don't okay. want to be stuck down here if something happens to the boat. So we're going from one small island to an even smaller island and our first order of business will definitely be trying to find food. We are still docked on Malta Island. And we're heading over to Gozo. The ferry bathroom is pretty okay. Very, very nice sink. Pretty modern setup with all the dispensers. Yeah, nothing to gag over either in a good way or a bad way. <laughs> So right now we're passing by the smaller island, the one that's in the middle, in between Gozo and Malta. And on it is the sort of famous blue lagoon. But there's a famous blue lagoon in like half the world's countries, I feel. At first it's like, oh, the blue lagoon in Iceland, that's the famous one. Now it's like, wait, you're gonna go to Kyrgyzstan without going to the blue lagoon? <laughs> I think we're skipping it because it is crowded with boats, <laughs> as far as I can tell. Unlocking the car. I have my active ride, just press more. It's opening, so we should. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> this is a weird system. A bit of a nerve wracking experience. They just tilted the whole floor <laughs> so everyone can drive down. Is there a turn or not? Yeah, these guys in front of us are having trouble. Can they? It's 
very hard to find a restaurant that offers vegan Maltese food. So we're having Maltese American hamburgers. After Morocco, we're looking for anything that's indulgent after having literally only vegetables for nine days. Oh my God, it's so good. I didn't expect it. It's like really flavorful. Also, she was like, do you want any sauces? We just said ketchup. And she came with ketchup, sweet and sour sauce, and barbecue sauce. Eighty for service. So we are now walking around the city of Victoria in Gozo and even here on the smaller island of Malta they have a Marks and Spencer's food hall. They also have beautiful buildings but they do but <laughs> I mean do you survive off buildings or food? First, we're passing through the Villa Rundle Gardens, which is a mouthful. We're heading to the gelateria, and then we're gonna walk with that up to the Citadel. <laughs> okay, so this place is supposed to have four different vegan flavors. One of them is the one I've been craving for a long time, which is dark chocolate sorbet. I wish they had pistachio. That is my number one fave. But dark chocolate is a close second. Strawberry is good, very good. Chocolate, mm. oh yeah. <laughs> This is Independence Square. They have a very, very beautiful statue. And we just found out that the people of, of Gozo are called Gozitans. Gozit, Gozit, Gozitans. Gozitani. I don't know. Something like that. And of course, there's the quintessential European tourist square with all the restaurants and bars facing out into the little plaza with a nice building. But this is a very cute and intimate one. Heading into St. George's Basilica. The view from up here on the Citadel is absolutely amazing. 360 degrees, just beautiful hills and different plantations and just towns everywhere with their own separate cathedrals or church towers. It reminds me a little bit of when we were in San Marino. Gosh, I just had a near-death experience. That's exaggerating a little bit, but I put these sunglasses on like a very high ledge. It was so windy up in the Citadel, so they just flew down, probably like five meters or something. And I was like, oh my God, that's gonna be a very certain death for my sunglasses, but they actually survived without a single scratch. I don't know how that's possible. Now this is good stuff. Wow. Now we're talking. We just drove down the most scenic route. These rocks behind me are very, very beautiful. It reminds me of a mix of Highway 1 in California and Algarve. That is literally what I was just going to record myself saying. Literally, yeah. So, this place used to be quite the tourist attraction, one of the main ones in Malta, because what's right behind me used to be a very beautiful scenic arch. But sadly, in 2017, there was a really bad storm and the arch collapsed. But this place is still really beautiful. Wishing we had our own boat to dock here, but also kind of glad we don't have a boat because it's This is so cool. So up here on this little like peninsula thing, there are all these holes. And I looked closer, I was like, what is that? What is that? And I realized that these are salt deposits that have formed naturally inside these holes, which is just the most fun, like serendipitous discovery.
so it's time to head back to Malta Island again from Gozo and the system is honestly so streamlined with the ferry like you only pay when you go from Gozo to Malta and not the other way around that way you only pay for the round trip ticket so you only pay once so there's only like gates for paying on one side and not on the other pretty smart So apparently there's a whole convenience store on uh, the ferry, which is nice. Oh my god, I love this. A full-on store on a boat. Hummus chips, which I think means chickpea chips. <laughs> How cute is this? We ordered sushi for delivery. Oh, let's see if the sushi's good. I think it will be. Look at this yumminess. Good night. Good morning, guys. It's a new day, and we are about to do our next activity on the trip, which we're very excited about. It's a bit gray outside, so we're hoping we can still see underwater, but it's gonna be a good practice nonetheless. And it's 45 euros per session, so I think that's relatively cheap for a scuba dive. Yeah, definitely worth it. This is gonna be our first scuba dive since we got our certifications in Thailand about a month ago. I think it's good that we're trying to keep it fresh. It couldn't be any more convenient because the diving place is literally outside our hotel. This is our first real dive, right? After getting certified. And the amount of paperwork is like, it's more than starting a company. <laughs> so, diving in European waters is a bit different from the tropical waters in Thailand. Not only do we have to wear a long sleeve uh, wetsuit, which is like, <laughs> it's almost impossible to get into. We also have to wear a short sleeve one on top of it because the water is that cold. <laughs> there it is. All right. Here comes the test of our memory. Got your BCD going, got your regulator going. A regulator, Isabella. Regulator? I don't even know. This is a nice throwback. Yeah. 10 euros for every mistake we make, right? Two layers of wetsuits. Welcome to Europe. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to do a moon landing. And also like I'm about to dislocate my shoulder. <laughs> We couldn't get any footage from the actual dive, but let's just say it was far from our Thailand diving experience. We had really bad luck with the winds, which were causing huge waves and currents. Well, at least we got to practice our diving skills. We moved on from the experience and headed to our last stop on the trip. We made it to Medina, the second city called Medina that we've been in this year. Although this is not called Medina, this is Medina. <laughs> Medina. I mean, who has time for vowels anyway? Right. Medina and Dina is an old walled city, and we're heading over towards the main gate. It's just so cool and funny to have a city or a town called Medina here on Malta in Europe, in a Christian country. Obviously, it has to do with uh, the Maltese history because the people who originally lived here came over from modern day Tunisia and they were Arabic speakers that then got shut off from the rest of the Arabic speaking world. But I guess this is kind of like a remnant here, this uh, name of this town. So that's a pretty interesting piece of history. <laughs> One thing I have to say is that even though we've only been here for five minutes, I already like Medina a lot more than Valletta. Because this feels more calm, not super touristy, although it is a huge tourist attraction. There's not as many people, there's not as many restaurants and stores. It has a very nice vibe and it's so beautiful. <laughs> This does remind me of the view on Gozo yesterday. The difference is that over there we can see Valletta, the capital. And on 
that note, we are done in Medina. We're gonna walk around Rabat a bit, so we might include some footage, but. Fun fact, Rabat in Arabic means suburb, apparently, and Medina, of course, <laughs> is city. And another fun fact in Swedish, Rabat means, uh, <laughs> Like planted it? garden. I don't know what the word is. It's like is. where you plant flowers, yeah, like your- like a flower garden. So on that note, <laughs> see you in the desert well, of our 86th country, which we will maybe reveal in the next video. So we're going to 86 and 87 in the span of two days. Yes, that's a hint as to where we're going. This is super pretty as well, and it reminds me a little bit of it reminds me a little bit of Bergamo in Italy, which is one of our favorite places in Italy. And the reason I was thinking, like, we always compare places to other places. The reason we do that is so if you have been to that place but you haven't been here, or if you've been here but you haven't been there, you can kind of make that connection and be like, oh, okay, maybe I don't need to go, or maybe you loved it, so maybe you do want to go. Suburbs are super cool. Even Rabat is super beautiful. So also worth checking out. Also worth checking out if you're coming to Medina. Mm -hmm.